Hello Internet, welcome to a new project we're working on called Datasphere. Uh, so this is just going to be a really simple data distribute or data visualization application we're going to be working on. And the idea is we're going to create a visualization in Unity that is going to accept data from a number of sources. And the way we're going to have it accept data from those sources is we're not going to add, we're not going to add any way in the app or in the game itself to accept that data. What we're going to do is we're going to have a microservice or sort of a, a visualization layer, which we're going to build in Unity. And then we're going to have a bunch of other applications that we're going to collect data from. Say we want to uh, visualize Twitter data. This is going to allow us to do that. Uh, so the idea here is we're doing a data grid or data sphere rather. So the idea is we have, a, we have this particle system and what I want to do is I want to make a sphere that we distribute this along. And so what we're going to be working on in this video is we're going to be making it so that we can actually distribute our particles at specific points on that sphere. And we want them to have specific data about them, which I don't know how we're going to do, but we're going to figure it out. That's kind of the point. So let's get started and we'll see what happens. I honestly... Don't know where this is going to go. I kind of wanted to just be able to create this and then like plug it into like a Twitter hashtag, for example, based on all of the users that are tweeting about something and just sort of graph it. And then if you graph it by latitude and longitude, theoretically, I think you should be able to see like a outline of the world if you could do a high traffic uh, hashtag. And I think that'd be pretty cool. I think there's a lot of uses for that. And then I think what we could do is we could plug in like VR or something. So you could kind of just walk around it or like pull it big and inspect it or do whatever else you need to do. So I think, I think we can expand this as far as we want to go, uh, depending on your guys's interest and my interest, we'll see how far we take it, but I'm going to open source it. So you guys can check it out later after this video is done or just look in the description and the link to GitHub should be there. So I'm going to get started. Uh, we have a particle system already. I haven't really done anything. The only thing I did is I created this data sphere emitter. There's nothing here. So let's start editing this if we can. I've been having computer issues. Uh, my hard drive got corrupted earlier this week. Actually, Christmas Day, my hard drive got corrupted. That was a good, good present. Uh, but I think it's all good now. So hopefully things are fine. And if not, then I'll deal with them and you will never see this. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, let's make this public. And so this is just going to accept our particle system. And then what we want to do, at least for now, is something. How do we want to do this? So there's a few ways I think we could do this. Uh, we could emit particles at specific positions, which I think you can do with this emit. And I don't know what the emit params take. Let's find out. Angular velocity, oh, they take all kinds of things. So we can give it position and all that. So let's just do that. Let's give it a position equal to now, I don't know if this is local or world coordinates, so we can find out. Uh, let's just give it a random uh, on unit sphere. So this will give us a random vector three that's on the unit sphere. So it'll be a one by one by one sphere. We're going to get a uh, point somewhere on that sphere. And so we'll emit something there. And we'll emit just one. And so what this is going to do is our particle system is actually going to handle limiting all of that. And it's going to handle optimizing it. So it's going to group. It's going to, we can limit the number of data points by just changing this max particles. And we can actually turn this emission off because our script is going to be actually emitting them. And then... We can also change like the rendering and stuff. And in there, there were uh, colors and things that we can change. Yeah, so start color and so forth. So theoretically, we can change all of those just in the, that parameter. 
uh, they can be kind of passed in. So like Twitter may be, I don't know, like blue, for example, and YouTube would be red and so forth. So you can plug in a bunch of data sources and theoretically distinguish them. I don't know how that'll work, but we're going to find out pretty quickly. So let's do that. I think I can close most of that and pull this guy on there. And let's just connect them and see what happens. What we're expecting is that, actually. Uh, so there's velocity being applied here, which we don't want. But everything else seems to be working. You can see it's appearing in sort of a sphere shape. Uh, and just to test this, if I set the, not the size, but the start speed to zero, we should see it form sort of a sphere. And it appears like we're using local coordinates in that a particle position so this should work perfectly for us so this sphere is actually going to be have a radius of one so it will actually be two uh, units across and it looks like that is correct it's extending a little bit over it because our particles are so big but if i shrink them down we'll get something like this and so now we have a ton of particles that are sort of forming this uh, the shell of whatever whatever it is we want, and so this is a good first step. It's not we're not going to use really any of this, but it gets us to the point where we kind of know what we need. Uh, so the next step, I think, is probably let's get a random color in there. So let's do start color equal to. A random color sure I don't know how, what this will do but actually while we're at it why don't we make this execute in edit mode and that way it should yeah so this is just going to run now even though we're in the editor and so we don't need to stop or anything. So eventually we can actually just, well, we can debug this now without having to start our project every time, which as we add things is going to be nice. So I'm going to shrink that down. I'm going to make the size smaller again. Uh, since this is totally random colors, you'll see there's like blacks and stuff, which don't really look very good, but it kind of gets us an idea and we can kind of get all those fun colors in there. So, now what we need is we need a way to actually input data into this emitter. Obviously doing it in the update isn't a good way to solve this. So what is the best way to do this? I also don't, so I don't really want to input things as a vector three. I'm thinking we might be able to use the uh, elevation and the the other orientation, um, similar to how they use, similar to how it's done in uh, astronomy. So the idea here, if I can remember how it's done, is you have a you have a flippy majiggy, the 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 pitch, but it's not called the pitch. Anyway, we'll call it pitch for now, because I I'm totally blanking on what it's called. So we'll improvise. I'm gonna make another function to handle that. We're just going to call it create data point and we'll give it a pitch and well, we'll do a yaw and a pitch. And so yaw is going to be our, uh, our totally blanking on words and I, it's frustrating anyway. Our yaw is going to be this way. It's going to be along our equator. And then our pitch is going to be up and down. So what we want to do is actually get rid of this, put it here, and have this create a data point. Like so. And we want two random values. One between there and random range of negative one. To one. So I'm trying to, th is that correct? I think so. So a f one 
on the yaw will be a full rotation around our sphere. But then the pitch will be at the equator, and it can either be negative 1, which will be all the way down, or 1, which will rotate it all the way up. And th that way we kind of have uh, a unique system for passing in data. So this, these are the two parameters that will actually be passed in, as well as other data. So you'll be able to pass in metadata, for example, like say if you're tracking tweets. We may want to actually pass in what the tweet said. So that as you zoom in, we could actually pull up what that tweet said. I don't know how we'll do that, <laughs> but but I think I think we can play around with it. Uh, so now what? <laughs> uh, we have this. That's going to put it at a random spot. So let's get our position. Which we can do. Uh, let's do data position as the name of the value. And that will just be where it is in world space. And how can we do that? I think that we can use uh, the sphere. Yeah, I think we can use trig for this. So if we do a new vector three, we don't actually care about one of, well, no, we do care about one of them. Shoot. This is going to be harder than I thought. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be harder than I was expecting. Because you're going to have a pitch, and that's going to affect your y-axis. And then you're going to have a yaw, which is going to affect that. Actually, they're both going to affect both of them. Shoot. That, that makes this difficult. Uh, what's the formula for that? So for yaw, for, x, for point x, that is going to be math f times the sine of the yaw. Uh, plus, or actually times, the, so sine wave goes, starts at zero, and so that would be what we want for pitch, times our math f sine of our pitch. I could be, so these form formulas I'm coming up with on the spot, very much probably wrong, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna roll with them, and so I'm kind of let me let me figure this out and then we'll we'll walk through it and I'll explain myself. It's a little bit hard to do them both at the same time. Uh, so this may for the most part seem like rambling right now. Uh, for the height for y, I think that can just be the sign of the pitch if I'm correct. And I think we may need to factor in some pies here uh, because we're doing, yeah, we're going to need that, but I can do that later. Uh, and then for y, it should just be the cosine of the yaw times the sine of the pitch. Okay, so let me walk through what this is supposed to do, and then we'll, we'll think about it. So... Our x and our y or z, our x and z are almost the same. They're just uh, switching the sine and this cosine, and that is the sine and cosine is just a two D equation for graphing a circle. And so what I'm thinking is, if we graph that circle, then all we need to do is also multiply that by how high up our sphere we are. And if we do that, then theoretically it should move us in kind of thinking that's wrong but that that's sort of the reasoning there uh, for our sign it's gonna go from 0 to negative 1 and then from or it's gonna be sort of a wave that is 0 when it's 0 and then if it's negative 1 it'll be down here and then if it's if it's 1 it'll be up here somewhere so it kinda goes like that 
which I think also might be, no, that makes sense because the sphere kind of slows down. Anyway, <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. We don't really need to do anything. It should just start going. Going very wrong. Everything is in the center. Actually, no. Everything is not in the center. Ooh, this is unique. So this is because we are not going, we have totally wrong dimensions. I think we can fix that. <clears throat> Can we fix that? Yes, we can fix that. Maybe we can fix that. I don't know. First off, we're going to multiply all of these by pi. And so there are easier ways to do this. I'm kind of just curious about solving this the fun way with uh, trig. We could just create a vector and then do some uh, like manipulations of it, some multiplication to get it to, into what we need or just rotate the vector like Unity's standard way. Well, that's no fun. This way we get a, well, okay, it's kind of getting a little bit out of hand because I just broke it more. Well then, that worked well. So it would appear everything is zero. I'm gonna guess though, everything is not zero. Hmm. Why would everything be zero? Oh, that explains it. First off, our range was integers, which means it's just going to do random integers between the range, which we didn't want, which explains why things were not that way. And now we have, ooh, that did not work at all. Actually, that's I know why that's happening. Because we wanted the inverse of this sign. And the inverse of the sign is going to be... I don't think it's... Eh, we'll plug it in and see what happens. I don't think that's right. Okay. So now we are getting things distributed along our sphere. Now, uh, let's debug this a little bit. So what I'm thinking is we can do, let's plug in a different color. So we're not going to use a random color anymore. We're actually going to use our data position for our color. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to do a new color. And that's going to be... Uh, one, let's do one plus our data position dot x uh, times 0. 0.5. And so we're doing one plus because it's going to be between negative one and one. This gets it to between zero and two, and then we have it and we get our value. If we do that three more or two more times rather, then we can map this to our y and our z. And so our red value is going to be based on the x position. Our y value will be based, or our, bl will be, our blue will be our y value, and our green will be our z value. And so we should see our sphere kind of start forming uniform colors. And there we go. So now, the only other thing I want to do is increase the total number it can handle. And stick this in a for loop that is going to execute, let's do 10 times. So now we'll get 10 times as many points. And we should be able to do quite a bit with that. It should give us, ooh, oh, oops, <laughs> I think it just crashed. Yep. All right, 
So that broke Unity. I am bad at my job. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Let's try that again and see if we can't figure out what happened. Everything's broken. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, we may have to redo a few things because I don't think I had saved. So let's get back there. Oh, it's all gone. Shoot. Okay. Well, let's, where did our particle system? There it is. Well, this will be tedious, but we can do it quick. Let's create that. Put it at position one, like that. Uh, we'll set the start size to 0 0.1, so it's nice and small. Drop the speed again. And we'll bring that down, because I don't really need it. Remove the emission, so it doesn't emit anything. And then we'll drop down our sphere emitter. And we'll stick on our particle system. Okay, doesn't seem to like that. I wonder what... I wonder what's causing that, because it didn't seem to have an issue until we stuck that for loop on there. Which is a little bit... a little bit weird. But keep in mind, I am using one of the early releases of Unity 5.5 when they just revamped all of their particle stuff. So it very well could be... It just a little bit unstable right now, and that that's totally expected. It's just a little bit annoying. <laughs> so let's reset that uh, one more time. I'll actually save this time. That would be smart to do, so we don't have to keep redoing it. And then let's see if we can't figure this out. That looks kind of cool. It looks like a little bit of fog or something. Cool. All right. We don't really need that, though. And get rid of it and let's drop our sphere emitter on there and connect our particle system there we go that looks a little bit better looks kind of messy but you get the general idea bring it up a bit And so this is sort of what we're expecting. Uh, so let's see, our green should be our Z value. So this is our positive Z. This is our negative Z, because this one's green. Uh, let's see, red should be our X, which means this is X and this is not. And then our top should be our blue. So this is our this is our uh, y and this is our negative y, which looks correct. So I think that's good. It seems to be working. It's a little bit the z sorting on these particles is not perfect, as you can see. We're getting some weird splotches in there, but I think we can work around that. I think actually there may be. There may be some options for that here. I don't see them though, so we will ignore that for now. It's not really super important. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't see them, so we'll we'll pretend like they don't exist. Oh wait, I saw it. Sort mode. By distance. There we go. And so this way, uh, so one of the things to keep in mind when you're rendering transparent things in video games, transparent things suck. <laughs> so rendering transparent things is really hard. Uh, you wouldn't think it is, but the issue is due to the optimizations that you have in, in 3D games, you don't render stuff if it's behind something. Uh, so like if I have a cube down beneath this little platform here that I put, we may calculate that it's there, but we won't actually physically draw it. And that's just one of the optimizations, because since you can't see it, there's no point in us spending time drawing those pixels to the screen, because it's it, it you're never going to see it. 
And so the issue you get is if you're, what happens is you write the way that's accomplished, I guess is the best way to put this is there's a Z buffer or there's a depth buffer. And so that depth buffer is going to store the distance from the camera to whatever pixel there is. And if something's behind it, it just ignores it. So what ends up happening is with transparent things, you do want to draw things behind it, but you also kind of want it to play nicely with your depth buffer and all that other fun stuff. And so what you have to do is you have to keep that in mind when you're rendering transparent things, which means to render transparent things, usually what you do is you render everything else and then you render your transparent stuff on top of it and you render your transparent stuff in some sort of order. Uh, that's why we were looking for a way to order this. Normally this isn't a, this doesn't matter like with normal opaque meshes, it's not really that big of a deal, but with transparent stuff, if you have two transparent objects and the first one is in front of it and drawn first, if you stick the other one behind it, it will just disappear as you put it behind it because of that, that depth buffer. And you don't, you don't want that to happen. And so you need to sort it. The, what we did is we stuck a sort mode, which is about up here. And so we're sorting by distance. So we're drawing from back to front, which means all of our, all of our particles are now stored in memory or they're iterated over in an, in an array or whatever from back to front and drawn in that order, which is going to be slower than just drawing all of them arbitrarily. So if you select none, you get this, which is kind of messy. But if you sort it by distance, for example, you get this, which is cleaner, but it's going to be slower. And it looks like there's other things. So like you can do oldest in front and youngest in front, which just, I think, just depends on where you insert them into your list. Because I would assume they're some sort of, there's some sort of order in how they're stored. We're going to do by distance because that's going to be the cleanest and it's going to make the most sense. And it kind of gives us that nice look. So I think that's probably good for now. We kind of have our, our sphere of cloudiness. And so what we want to do now is we want to move on and actually there's two parts to the next thing. We need to open up a system for this Unity project to accept incoming transmissions. So I don't know how we're going to do that. It may be like a named pipe or some sort of other service, some sort of way for it to receive information. Once we have that done, we also need a way to have another project that submits to it. Uh, I will probably just use Twitter as the original data source, but the idea is you can take this and plug in anything. So if you have like a company or something and you need to visualize data that works on a sphere, you could plug it in, just write a little plug in and plug that data in and this would draw it for you. Uh, that That's the end goal. I don't know how far we'll get towards that, but that's that's where we want to get. So for now, I think I'll leave this here. Uh, so if you liked it, let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you didn't like it, let me know about that as well. And I'll try to fix it in the next one. Uh, but until next time, see you, internet.